Start your day the Eden way. Your perfect morning begins with Eden tea. Let every sip accompany your devotion, bringing peace and refreshment to your soul. Brewed with care by the makers of Eden Tea, supporting your mornings every step of the way. A very good morning to you. Welcome to the family devotion where the scriptures come alive as we discuss matters from the Bible and discover why the Bible matters. It's midweek and this is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, because God has made this day. Then you and I ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Where are you tuned in from? Where are you listening or watching us from? We'd love to hear from you. 20316 is our SMS line. 0786316316 is our WhatsApp line. Thank you for all those that are tuned in already. Rachel Njeri, thank you. Sherry Stella, Karen Odindo, Noah Okida from Lakisama. Thank you for joining in. Keep sending in your comments, your feedback. would love to interact with you. And as you do that, please remember your mornings can be something to look forward to with Eden Tea. And so serve yourself a cup of Eden Tea. And if you've not begun this journey yet, please do visit Top Select Supermarkets across the country or www.carirana.co.ke and begin your journey today with Eden Tea. You can be sure that with Eden Tea, every sip that you take is consistent, is of quality, and has a taste that's just crafted for you. And so kindly begin your journey with Eden Tea this morning. Well, this week we have been talking about a reasonable faith. Is Christianity reasonable? Are you able to make a defense when someone asks you for the reason why you have hope? Well, this week we've been aiming to equip you so that you would actually be able to confirm that our faith is a reasonable faith and be able to love God with your mind in that way. Today we look at another subject and we're asking the question, is God really good? And that question is asked, especially because of the prevalence of evil, the problem of pain and suffering. When I have lost a loved one, when I am sick, when I have lost a job, is God good? That is the question we'll be asking so that the next time we meet as a fellowship, as Christians, and the old phrase is repeated, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. It will not just be a trite phrase that we are saying, but rather we will be convicted and convinced that indeed he is good. Well, our guest is already here and looking forward to this conversation. But before that, let us look at what the psalmist says in Psalm 119 from verse 65 to verse 72. And then we get to this conversation. Psalm 119, verse 65 to verse 72. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. Listen to this. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The insolent smear me with lies, but with my whole heart I keep your precepts. Their heart is unfeeling like fat, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Wow. Shall we pray and get right to this conversation? Father, in Jesus' name, we worship you, we exalt you, we honor you. Lord, today we want to declare that you are good and you do good. That as we constantly say to each other, you are good all the time and all the time you are good. And today we want to ask that you would indeed teach us, speak to us, equip us, convict us. Through the agency of your word, we ask that today, Lord, we will live with the assurance that surely, even though my circumstances may not be good, yet God is good. I pray that you would be pleased to use your servant powerfully today as he just helps us to wrestle and grapple with this whole question of your goodness, O oh God. We want to pray that your spirit today will be at work in our hearts and in our minds, O oh Lord. We pray for everyone that is tuned in. Father, Lord, there are many that are tuned in right now, going through various forms of trouble, various forms of suffering and pain. We want to ask that today they will receive an encouragement from the Lord. 
that even in their pain, even in their despair, Lord, we want to ask today in the mighty name of Jesus that they will cast their eyes on you, Lord Jesus. We want to pray and ask that today they will feel the weight lifted from their hearts, O oh God, as they learn that indeed this God is good, this God cares. And so we commit each and every person to you and ask, Lord, that indeed today you will visit each of us, O oh God. You will remember each of us today. Somebody will have a personal experience of the Lord because that is what you do to us, O oh God. We thank you for family media and this privilege, Jehovah God, that we continue Christ Jesus to proclaim you through the air. We pray and thank you for all those that come alongside us, those that make their donations in order that Jesus will continue to be proclaimed. And we pray now, O oh God, would you speak for we who are your servants are listening in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Wow, is God really good? Well, uh, somebody saying, Francis Wafula tuned in all the way from Kitale and asema Nikoshamba. Kuvuna Maharagwe. Francis, si ukirudi basi utulete kidogo pia sisi. Huku tuko kwa shamba la mawe Nairobi. <laughs> Welcome, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good to be back again. This yes, yeah. yes, yes. And for those perhaps that are joining us today, you have not been with us uh, throughout the week. Our guest is Mr. Chege Mwangi, the chairperson for Apologetics Kenya, and he has been helping this week with this conversation. Mm. Now, yesterday, incidentally, Okay. I was in the bank um, doing some, some transactions and I, I sit next to a lady and she's like, Pastor. So I'm like, okay, uh, have we met in the congregation that I pass out, uh, you know, TV or radio? And then she's like, ah, I'm one of those silent listeners. Oh. Yes, and ah. she said, hii wiki mume tubariki sana. Ah, amen. Uh, she said, jana, mambo ilikuwa magumu kidogo, but the Holy Spirit will give us insight. But she really appreciated, uh, and I thought it would be nice, you know, to give that comment. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, now, uh, just help us by way of recap what we talked about about yesterday and then now we can get to today's conversation yeah yesterday we were dealing with the heavy question mm. of whether there is a god yes of course the um, the discussion is heavy mm. when you start getting into the um, evidences and the mm. things that are available for mm. us um and so we were just looking at how how can we know yeah. That there is a God. And we talked about how God himself has revealed mm. himself to us. Yeah. And also how he has left pointers to us in mm. nature mm. for us that we would seek him, you know, yeah. that we would see him mm. for who he is. Yeah. And so perhaps that becomes even a segue for today as yes. we talk about suffering. Because mm. if there is a God, mm -hmm. why suffering? Why suffering? And yeah. especially if that God is good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah, and that and that statement mm. that we make, mm. God is good all the time. All the time, and all, all the, the time, time, God is good. God is good. Mm. I don't know, um, you know, if this has been your experience, mm. but there are people who either have gone the path of atheism, agnosticism. Yes, you know, just this outright denial of God's existence, and 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 a number of them, it has to do on this question: suffering, uh, suffering, yeah. um, and and they grapple with that how. How, how can this be true? And yet, yet um, this is my so lived out reality. Yeah. And so begin us then with this conversation. Yes, and it, I have to say, this is the biggest, as you're saying, it's the biggest challenge mm. to, to faith, that if indeed there's a God who is good, yeah. how can there be suffering? Mm. Now, this question is as old, and in fact, it is asked in two ways. Let mm. me begin there. Yes. This question is asked in two ways. This is what is called the intellectual problem of evil. Mm -hmm. And this is the one where people try to argue how suffering shows us that there is no God. Okay. That's the intellectual one. So mm. that because of suffering, then God cannot exist. Yeah. It's the path that many will take into, say, atheism mm -hmm. because of this. But then there is what is called the emotional problem of evil, mm. where, okay, I am not saying there is no God, but I'm just asking, if there is a God, how mm. could he have let my mother die, yes. you know? How could he have let me get into this? So that's mm. the emotional problem. Yeah. So I want to start with the intellectual one, okay. and then we will go into the emotional right. problem of evil. Yeah. Now, the intellectual problem of evil is very old. It mm. was asked by the Greeks 
uh, and right from a guy who was called Epicurious, you had people formalizing the argument against God mm. about evil. And what he said is, well, if God is powerful, or rather, if God is willing to deal with evil, mm. and he can't, yeah. he is not all powerful. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is willing, yes, yeah. but he's not able to yeah. deal with the evil in the mm. world, mm. then he's not all powerful. Yeah. Well, if he can deal with the evil, but he is not willing to deal with the evil, mm. then he is not all good. Mm. He's malevolent, you know. Yeah. He is, I mean, he's looking at evil, he can deal with it and does nothing. Mm. Well, if, if he is both all powerful and all good, then why do we have evil? Mm -hmm. Because he is all powerful, he can deal with it, he's yeah. all good, he should be interested in dealing with it, mm. but he doesn't. Yeah. On the other hand, if he is not all powerful and he is not able and not willing to deal with evil, then how is he God? Yeah. So you, I hope you, you, mm. you can appreciate how the argument is going. Because mm. the point here is, an all-powerful and all-good God should, is, uh, is mutually exclusive to evil. Yeah. As in, if you have all-powerful and all-good on mm. this side, mm. then you can't have evil yeah. on, on, I on mean, the other on, side. Yes, so yeah. you have either, either or. Mm. It's either evil or, an, or God, mm. but you can't have both at the yeah. same time. Yeah. Now, here's the problem, though, with the intellectual problem of evil. You remember when yesterday when we were talking about stealing from God? Uh -huh. This is one of those examples mm -hmm. where the, in, the, the intellectual is stealing from God. Yeah. For you to make the argument mm -hmm. first against God because of evil, you need God to exist yeah. for, to allow you to make that argument. Mm -hmm. And this is why. If you remember when we were talking about the moral argument, we said, if you assume there is something as bad as evil, yeah. you are assuming there is something as good as the good. Yes. For you to say killing of a child is evil, it has to be that taking care of one and looking after them is a good thing. Yeah. You get. Yeah. But then for you to do that, in fact... For evil to exist, it needs the good. Mm -hmm. Because evil is just a deprivation of the good. Yeah. That uh, when I, there is nothing like evil. Mm -hmm. It's just when I come and take a good thing and use it badly, yeah. that I have deprived it of value. Mm. But on what basis am I using to determine that this is evil and this is good objectively? Yeah. That is, it is not just my opinion of the evil. Mm. What grounds am I using mm. to say that this thing is very evil and this one is good? And if I have a standard, mm -hmm. then I'm, as, I'm assuming a moral lawgiver. Yeah. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. And it is the same God that I'm trying to deny <laughs> who, who gives me the standard yeah. to prove that there is a good mm -hmm. and evil, isn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. So I am trying to destroy the same foundation that I want to build my house upon. Yeah. So that I cannot make an argument for evil, however bad it is, yeah. without God. Yeah. So in essence then, the presence of evil and suffering in the world, mm. you could say, is an argument mm. for why there is a God. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that seeing evil in the world, however bad it is, yeah. however we don't like it, yeah. is an example of why there mm. must be a God. Mm. Because for us to apprehend that reality and see how evil and bad it is, mm. God must exist. Mm. But secondly, the argument assumes that a good God and an all-loving God cannot use suffering mm -hmm. to meet his ends. Mm. Mm. That we are assuming yeah. an all-powerful, an all-good God, who is all-knowing, yes. don't forget, mm. cannot, in his own wisdom, yeah. have allowed for suffering mm to meet his end, or mm. rather to meet a certain goal. Yeah. Now, we might not know why, but that does not mean that it is, we don't, yeah. there is no reason. Yeah. It only means we are deficient mm. in figuring out why a good God 
mm. would allow suffering. Yeah. But that's the intellectual problem. Mm. It's just to say you cannot land into atheism because of suffering. Yeah. But there's a more difficult problem. Fine. I am willing to grant you that evil does not disapprove the existence of God. Yeah. But I don't like the suffering. Mm. Mm, it's painful. It's painful. Yeah. Well, I mean, when I see children dying of hunger, mm. when I see, I mean, people dying, when I see, when I see, I mean, I've experienced rape. I, I mean, why? Mm. Why would God at that point not deal yeah. with my suffering? Mm. And I have to say that the emotional problem is difficult. Mm. And we need not try to rationalize it yeah. as per se. Yeah. It is the question that even the men in the Bible struggled with. You find mm. Job. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's like, I, I mean, I, mm. why? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he, he looks to God and asks, why? Mm. Now, you will remember that Job had three friends who sat with him, you know, and yeah. argued with him. Yeah. And the only part perhaps that they can be loaded for is that one week where they sat with him mm. mourning. Mm. Mm. But the moment they tried to they start... They opened their mouth. Everything <laughs> went south. Because they began rationalizing as mm. if to say mm. that job you're suffering is mm. because of your sinfulness. Mm. It is because of the things that you have not done. Mm. Now... What well, that does is you are pointing one finger to Job, yeah. but they are four pointing towards mm. you. And later you will see God is very angry with them. Yeah. Do not try to rationalize the problem of evil and suffering. Mm. Because for the one who is going through it, yeah. it is real yeah. and true. Mm. Mm. But how does God invite us to think about evil and suffering that we are going through? Well, number one. He tells us that in the beginning is it was not so. Aha, uh -huh, yes. Tells us that, well, evil and suffering is real in this world, but that mm. was not God's intention. Mm. God did not plan for a world, well, God did not create a world with evil. evil. Mm. And we see that in Genesis. Yeah. He, say, he created and says, and he saw that it was good. Yeah. When man was in the Garden of Eden, when the, the garden that was in Eden, mm. and they were the animals that they were there, everything yeah. was good. Yeah. But then came a fall. And from the fall, we can see sin that enters into the world. And a large part then of the suffering that we begin to see is because of the actions of men mm. who have been separated from God. Yeah. So that most and when you think about much of the suffering that goes mm. around us mm. sometimes even famine and everything yeah. it is just humankind that's true that are not thinking about the other humans mm. you know mm. and so in a sense we want to say that you can't really blame god for the evil that we are seeing in the world mm. a large part of it not all of it we have to be clear yeah. a large part of it is because of human, yeah. because of men. Human choice. Human choice. Mm. But then the other thing that we see is that God is not aloof. Mm -hmm. God is not separated from our suffering. Yeah. In fact, and this is very unique to Christianity, very unique to mm. Christianity, mm. that it is only the Christian God who enters into our suffering. Yeah. That he does not look at us and see, oh, these guys are suffering. Mm. Ah, I mean, I'll deal with it. He enters into it. Yeah. And Jesus comes, and in fact, he's known as a man of suffering. Mm. That he goes through every bit of pain that you can think, loss of loved mm. ones, mm. including death. Yeah. Why? And he enters into our suffering as a way, both of showing us how to deal and engage with the suffering, but also as a precursor or as a way of dealing mm. with our suffering with finality. Yeah. And so the story then is that God did not create a world with suffering. Mm. But when suffering comes into the world, he himself enters into yeah. our suffering yeah. and leads the way. Mm. And is providing a solution. And then finally, what he tells us is that in the end, mm. suffering will be dealt with yeah. in finality. Yeah. And so 
God's story then is that I am walking through the suffering, mm. but my walking is slow. Yeah. Because many people think that if God was interested in dealing with suffering, he would come and throw in a magic wand mm. and say, whoop, vambo, and everything goes yeah. out. Yeah. But it is not God's way. Mm. And perhaps omniscience would tell him that it is not even the perfect way. Mm. Because when you think about it, for example, and this is just me thinking, yeah. and many theologians have thought about it this way, there's a sense in which if you deal with suffering that way, you remove the freedoms of men. Yep that you don't give humankind opportunity to express what they really, really want mm. and believe. Mm. And part of that expression leads to suffering. Yeah. But the other thing about the emotional problem of evil is that when you look at the men who knew God, mm -hmm. their experiences of suffering did not point them away from God, uh -huh. but rather it pointed, pointed them, them to God. back to God. Mm. Think about David. He said, and it's what I was looking for, Psalms 27. 127? No, Psalms 27, 27. verse 13. <coughs> A Psalm of David. Mm -hmm. If you read from verse 13 and 14. Okay. Uh, this is Psalm 27, verse 13 and 14. Mm. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Mm. Wait for the Lord. Mm. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Mm. Wait for the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Mm. Now, if you, verse 13, when the beginning is that I would have lost heart mm. unless I had believed mm. that I would see the goodness of God. In the land of the living. Now, think about this guy, David, mm. for a minute. Mm. This is a guy whom... Because of God's choice of him, yeah. he has suffered. Mm? I mm. mean, the guy was doing well, looking after <laughs> the sheep. He was happy wherever he was. Yeah. Until God says, you know, appoint mm. for me this mm. man. And mm. that appointment, yeah. thinking that it would be a nice thing, it takes him to the wilderness. Mm. Saul looks, chases after him. At some point, he has to pretend that he is a madman so that he could go to, is it to Ziklag, to the mm -hmm. king. Yeah in the Philistines. And yet he says, you know, I would have lost heart mm. unless yeah. I remembered the goodness, the goodness of, of the Lord. God. Mm. So the men who knew God, mm. even in their points of suffering, yeah. Yeah. number one, they knew that the knowledge of God does not remove the suffering. Yeah. It does not mean that because we know God, we will not suffer. Mm. In fact, Jesus has promised. Yes. In you this will world, suffer. you will face many troubles. Yeah. Many. You will face many troubles. Yeah. yeah. And yet, he says, but be of good cheer. Mm, I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. Mm. So God, in the question of suffering and pain, God answers with himself. Mm. When we are asking why, 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 yeah. God, why, yeah. look at what he tells Job. Mm. Job has been there, you know, God, how could you? How did this thing mm. happen? And God comes. He yeah. says, I have come. Mm. Answer me like a man. Yes. Mm? Mm. See, stand here and yes. if you are a man, answer me. Yeah. Why are you there mm -hmm. when I set the foundations of the earth? Mm -hmm. Have you entered the treasury of, uh, of snow? Wh why are you there? And so God is saying, why are you, you are asking the questions of why? I am answering you with the who. Mm. I am the who who understands the whole show. Yeah. And in as much as your myopia now does mm. not allow you to see what is at work, yeah. rest assured, mm -hmm. if you trust me, I am in control. Yeah. This is not a God who is detached. Mm. He's not a God who doesn't see. Yeah. He is a God who understands. Same mm. thing he tells Habakkuk. It's a verse that we like as an... an I finish this. It's a like we like verse we like quoting. Yeah. You know, see this vision, yeah, write, write it vision. down, yes. down. Write it on tablets. It will come to pass. Yeah. What was Habakkuk <laughs> still talking about? Habakkuk was expressing frustration. Yes. Mm? He was asking God, surely, mm. look, how can you use an evil nation to destroy a less evil nation? I mean, you are telling us the children of Israel yeah. are bad. Who yeah. are you using to destroy them? The yeah. Chaldeans. Mm. They are us. Mm. But uh, God tells him, you've not seen anything <laughs> yet. There is more, much more to come. Yeah. And even if I told you these things, you wouldn't understand. Now mm. what is God? 
Mm. Yeah. I, I like that. <laughs> um, what you've just said in terms of even when we look at the men of old, they would appeal, yes. you know, to God. They would come back to God. It's, it's the same case with Jeremiah and Lamentations. Mm. You know, he's lamented the fall of Jerusalem, mm. and then he comes to chapter 3 and says, Yet this mm. I will recall and therefore have hope. Yes. You know, the steadfast of the love of God never, never, never fails. See His this. compassion, mm. they fail not. They are new mm. every morning. Great is your yes. faithfulness. faithfulness. And when we come back, because I want us to, to listen to a song on the goodness of God, mm. um, I would want us to then just consider this thought. Mm. Our teaching sometimes, um, and I speak as a pastor, mm. have we done God's people an in injustice yeah. in telling them, come to Jesus mm. and your troubles mm. are sorted? You know, as you ponder that, I would want us to, to talk about that on the other side of this conversation. But wow, what are you learning? What are you hearing? Keep sending us um, your comments, your feedback. There's already a question that somebody has asked and we'll be responding to that. What was Job's wife trying to justify by telling Job to persecute God and then die, to, to blaspheme against God and then die? Um, all right, we'll be responding um, to that. Keep sending um, you know, your comments, your feedback. In fact, I have a question for you. Is there ever a time mm. when you doubted God's goodness? And what was the circumstance around that? Is there ever a time when you doubted God's goodness? And what was the circumstance around that? 20316 is our SMS line. Um, uh, 0786 316 316 is our WhatsApp line. Please do engage with us. But for now. Start your day the Eden way. Your perfect morning begins with Eden tea. Let every sip accompany your devotion, bringing peace and refreshment to your soul. Brewed with care by the makers of Eden Tea, supporting your mornings every step of the way. That God is good, even when we suffer, even when we go through pain and sorrow and trouble, God is still good. And those are some of the things we are wrestling with today. Keep engaging with us, 20316 is our SMS line, 0786. 316, 316 is our WhatsApp line. Let us know that you are tuned in by sending us a message or through those numbers. But also, ukiamuka, grab yourself a cup of Eden tea as we journey together. Uh, you know, feel free um, to, to grab yourself a cup of whatever flavor it is that you fancy. Whether it is that kick of ginger warmth that you will desire. Whether it is the classic black tea tea, whether it is, you know, purple tea or just herbal tea, lemon tea, whatever it is that you like, Eden tea has you covered. Or just the classic, you know, uh, traditional brewed tea, Eden tea has you covered. Feel free to visit Top Select Supermarkets or www.karirana.co.ke and begin your journey today with Eden tea. Well, some questions that came in, um, if this is someone... Mm. Uh, from Nakuru, Wanza from Nakuru says, mm. I'm struggling with that question right now, mm. having lost a very dear one last evening. Mm, no. Yet I know God is good. Amen. Mm. May the Lord comfort you, Wanza. Yeah. May he wrap his arms around you mm. and remind you mm. that he's there with you, that he's there mm. with you. Um, Francis Wafula had asked the question, what was Job's wife trying to do? You know, when he tells mm. go, uh, Job, curse God and die. And die. <laughs> this is Francis, the mm. one who will bring us beans mm. from Kitale. Ah, <laughs> yeah. I hope he will. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, so okay. what, was, what was, even as we get to the other well, question that I had asked, what was he trying to do? What was she trying to do, rather? I, I would say the, the scripture does not give us so much mm. context on mm. Job's wife. Yeah. But we can tell, and you will notice that God does not deal so much with her. Mm. You will notice that this is a lady who sees her husband suffering, mm. and she was trying to figure out a, a way of helping him just deal with the suffering. Yeah. You know? And she thought to herself, if God has put, at least she knew it was God. Yeah. If God has put you through all this, why mm. don't you just curse him? Mm. Then you die, yeah. and your, your suffering will come to an, to an end. end. And, that, and that's why I think Job asks her, will you argue mm. just like that? foolish women will yeah. argue that the idea is that we are not going to be willing to accept mm. bad when it comes from God. 
our only relationship with God only operates when he is giving us the good. good. Yeah. When we are experiencing good things from him, we are happy, we rejoice. But when he brings bad things mm. or he allows yeah. bad things, then we are not with him. Mm. And, and I think that was the thinking behind Job's yeah. life. Of course, we can go into the details of whether it was right, mm. did God punish her and... The, yeah, the, the scripture is silent, is, on, is that. silent on that. Yeah. But that's the big idea. Yeah, yeah. And I think it, it points us sometimes to what now you are talking mm -hmm. about. The fact that many times, and especially those of us who use the pulpit yeah. and are preaching to people, yeah. sometimes we misdirect people. Mm, mm, mm. And you can tell people's theology, by the way, mm -hmm. when they are going through suffering. Yeah. Mm. That that when when things when when things become hard, really really hard, mm. and we don't want to trivialize it. Mm -mm. The pain is real. Yeah. Like the, the sister, the sister who has lost a loved one. Yeah. How can we even speak mm. about that? And you know just how close you are to yeah. your relative, yeah. and how how important they were to you. How mm. can we even begin to speak mm. about something mm. like that? And yet, the only thing we could say is that it is actually more harmful to tell people that they will not suffer. Yeah. Because that is very foreign mm. to the scripture. Mm. And to reality. And to reality. Mm -hmm. That God, and I'm, I'm just thinking about Paul, for example, Philippians chapter 3, mm. when he's talking about that I have counted everything, to be lost mm. for the sake of knowing Christ. Yeah. And he says, I want to know him. Mm. But how does Paul want to know him? I want to know the power of his resurrection yeah. and the fellowship of, of his, his suffering. suffering. Yeah. That Paul understood that the relationship with Jesus, it was a full mm. package. Yeah. The Kikuyus say that when you buy a cow, mm. you buy with the rope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it comes together. Yes. <laughs> so that the 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 no the experience of knowing god means also accepting everything mm. that god has to bring yeah because even the sufferings that he brings to us mm. he does it because he is good mm. Mm. and that mm. is the most difficult thing to appreciate yeah. yeah that all these things he is doing because he is good yeah and so we probably need to change when we are talking to people, and even as believers, yeah. let's not just blame the pastors, yeah, yeah. even as a believer, that when you begin thinking about God, do not think that suffering is something that is not meant for the mm. believer. In fact, that is what is called the word of faith. Mm. It's, it's the idea that the believer is not meant to suffer. Mm. The believer is just meant to enjoy the goodness of mm. the Lord here. And mm. the goodness is just the material, the material things and yeah. the nice things. Mm. You are the head and not the tail. Mm. You are everything. Mm. But that enjoying of God's goodness comes with it. Mm -hmm. Suffering is yeah. part of God's goodness yeah, yeah. in a way. Because number mm. one, God sometimes can use suffering to discipline us. That's true. God can also use suffering to achieve his end and his mm. goal. Mm. He can also use suffering as a yeah. means for you to encourage others. Mm. And, I do, and I know many people have experienced that. You yes. go through a difficult thing, you go through loss. Mm. And yet, like my, and I think my wife was just giving me a, 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 an example of herself. She went through a very difficult thing this year. Mm. And she tells me, you know, I would never have appreciated. Because mm. people have been telling me that this has happened. I think yeah. it is bad, but I never really appreciated until I went through it. And I was like, now I understand. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So... Yeah. Sometimes God allows that kind mm. of suffering for mm. so many reasons. And, yeah. and notice I am not saying that this is the reason. Mm. I am just saying that God, God in, in his, his wisdom, wisdom yeah, yeah. keeps allowing for mm. these things mm. because he is good. Yeah. Because he is good. Yeah. And, and I like that, mm. you know, us mm. beginning from mm. that premise and foundation that God is good. And so even mm. when we can't explain, mm. we may not know the reasons. Mm. But we are so tethered. Yes. If I borrow your, mm -hmm. uh, you know, your ropes <laughs> uh, analogy, we are so tethered yes. to God's truth. To him. 
um, that we don't veer off mm. too far, yes. even with our wrestling. But the other thing about this, especially mm. us being African, mm. which again has crept in the church, so, mm. so it's, it's sort of the two edges of the sword, mm. is we seem to relate suffering mm. with things we have done. Yeah. And sometimes, unfortunately, mm. it's taught. Mm. Now, granted, mm. I think it's important I add this, mm. granted there are some forms of suffering mm. that are as a result of our sin. True. Um, but mm. that is not the totality of suffering. No. So just speak into that space where our African experience and mm. our African worldview, mm. together with some kind of teaching that we have received, mm. causes us sometimes to look within and blame us and wonder, what did I do wrong to deserve this, yeah, so to speak? Yeah. And, and, and I agree. I mean, it's very right. The African in us, perhaps it's, it's enculturation. Mm. It's how we've been trained to think. Well, I, I wouldn't say it's genetic. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but you see, for the African, mm. all suffering came because of, an, of, of a sin mm. or something mm. wrong that we had done. So if there's no rain, they had to go back and appease yeah, these guys. Gods, we have yeah. wronged them. Mm. We have wronged the gods. Mm. If 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 death is happening in your home, mm. there is something you didn't do. Maybe you mm. didn't give dowry. Mm. You didn't. Um, I don't know. You've yeah. done. There's something. a process you didn't complete. Exactly. Mm. You didn't. You did not talk to your uncle the right way. Mm. Th that's why you are seeing. Uh, you are not having children. children yeah. All their know. miscarriages. Exactly. Mm. So we tend to relate. Every happening, suffering that is coming to us mm. with something we have not done. Mm. But that is not the case. Yeah. That is not so. And, and, and if you look at the two guys we have used as an example, yeah. Job. What yeah. had Job not done? Nothing. God himself. And they are, <laughs> I, I can't remember anyone else that God actually commands and says, have you considered my righteous servant Job? Yani, mm. it is God... You would almost say God is going too fast. Mm. He's trying to brag with Job. <laughs> I mean, you, can't you see? See my guy, see yeah. my guy here. Yeah. And then the devil is like, ah, it's because you mm. have, you know. Yeah. And so Job's suffering are primarily because God was, and let's mm. put it in quotes yeah. here, bragging yeah. about Job. Mm. Even David, what yeah. had he done? He's a man after God's own heart. He's a man after God's yeah. heart. Now, of course, there's a suffering that mm. came, mm after he slept with Bathsheba. Yeah. That was his fault. Mm. But much of what happens here yeah. before, mm. we, we, we don't see that. Yeah. And therefore, sometimes, and I think we do a lot of injustice to ourselves, that when you realize maybe you are having the, you know, miscarriages and things like that, you want to say, oh, I didn't talk to my mm. ancestor properly. But mm. that is not for the people of God. Yeah. Because God sometimes and most of the time just allows the suffering, mm. not because of what we have done, mm. Mm. but because of his glory. Yeah. Now, it is difficult to understand that. Mm. It is difficult to apprehend how how can my suffering yeah. be glorious to God? Mm. But I think we punish ourselves too much. We, we, we are very unfair to ourselves because it even confuses us, yeah. confuses our theology of mm. God, that every time uh, I, I hit myself on the road, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. <laughs> I, I do that. It was, it was always because I did something. Yeah. It is always because I did something. Mm, mm. In fact, I think that kind of thinking trivializes God's sovereignty. Uh -huh. It doesn't allow God to be God. Mm. It does not allow God to be in control mm. of all circumstances of our lives. Mm. So that, yes... We are suffering, yeah. but God is in control. Mm. So mm. when we go through suffering, I think it is there is wisdom in asking myself, is there sin in uh -huh. my life? Uh -huh. But even if there is sin in my life, yeah. the answer from God mm. is not that you can solve your own sin. That's true. Isn't it? That's true. It is not if, say, per adventure it is true. Mm. I didn't speak to my aunt or something. Yeah. The solution from God is not going to speak to your aunt mm -hmm. as if... You can earn your salvation mm. by works. Yeah. The solution is go back to the Lord. That's true. And tell the Lord, you know, I am mm. suffering. It is mm. hard. Mm. I don't like it. It's mm. difficult for me. And yet, mm. I know that you are a good God. Mm. And allow the Lord want to minister to your heart yeah. during the suffering. Mm. Allow God 
to reason it. It's what happens to Jesus when he is at the Garden of Gethsemane. Yeah. He is, I mean, he is suffering. In ways we will never appreciate. We will never appreciate. When mm. the Bible talks about how he shed blood. Yeah, droplets of blood, like sweat. It is stress. Mm. Mm. And yet at that point, he asks that Lord remove this cup. Mm. But not my will, but yours be but done. Yours be done. And mm. the Bible says that the angel of the Lord came mm. and strengthened him. Yeah. God did not take away the cup of suffering, mm. but he gave him strength yeah. Yeah. to deal with the circumstances. Yeah. So it's, that's what we are looking for. That's true. It's the same with Paul in mm. that, you know, the thorn in his flesh. Mm. As he is mm. <coughs> saying, you know, three times I asked the Lord mm. to remove, you know, this but he said... My grace is sufficient. Mm. My grace is sufficient. Um, grace is let great. me see what a few people are saying even as we continue this conversation. Mm. Brenda says, I'm listening from Kisumu. Uh, Mr. John Gidanga from Nakuru, I was waiting for you, sir. Says, this is a very enlightening conversation. Honestly, there are many times I've doubted the love of God, especially when I went through extremely hard times. Mm. But the good news is he has never failed to give me a breakthrough mm. at the end of the day. I believe the more revelations and encounters you have with God, the more endurant you become. Needless to say, the proper understanding of the word of God is everything. everything. True, true, true. 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 A very true, Mr. John Gidanga. Duncan says, I'm tuning in mm. um, from Kisumu. Thank you, Duncan. Um, somebody else is saying, praise the Lord, I am I'm tuned in. Even as we continue, mm. one of the passages that perhaps dumbfounds many mm. is, is, you know, that passage in Romans 8 that says, and we know. Mm. Mm, that God works together all, all things, things for the good of those who love him who are called according mm, to his purposes. purposes. Where mm. is hope and encouragement there for the believer? Mm. Because it's all things. It yes. means the good, it and means the bad, it means the ugly. All of them. All things. All of them. Yeah. And, and I, I think I want to echo John's words when he says that a deeper mm -hmm. understanding of God Yeah. There's, a, there's a, an apologist by the name of John Lennox, mm. and he says, sufferings are like the wind, mm. and your faith is like a fire. Mm -hmm. If you have fire like a, on a candle, yeah. and you put it in the wind, to be blown off, it extinguishes mm. it. But if you have a forest fire mm. and the wind blows, yeah. uh, it spreads the fire. It spreads the fire. Wow, I like that analogy. <laughs> yeah. mm. So that part of the encouragement for us is to know God. Mm. The real encouragement is pursue God mm. and pursue him especially during the times when you're not suffering. Yeah. Because that faith that you have mm. or the understanding that you have, remember when we were talking about apologetics, yeah. that when we don't feel God's love and think that we don't know God's truth, mm. it is what we know that will carry us. Yeah. It is that knowledge, the things that we know about God that will carry us. Mm. So when now you're not suffering, let's yeah. say that, immerse yourself in understanding and knowing of God. Mm. So that in the times of suffering, yeah. you will remember that there is hope. Mm. That even when, when, when things are so difficult, mm. I can encourage myself yeah. by knowing the Lord is good. Mm. And you know, the unique thing, as, as we've just been saying, God does not invite us mm -hmm. to go away. Yeah. or deal with our sufferings mm. alone. Mm. That's the message of the cross. Yeah. He immerses himself into our suffering. Mm. It is not as if Jesus, you will remember when Jesus comes and finds Lazarus is dead. Yeah. Now people think he was crying because of Lazarus. Mm. No. He says when he saw. Yeah. Mary weeping together yes. with the Jews who were yes. with her. When he saw their turmoil, mm. and the Bible says. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Now think about that reaction vis-a-vis -vis when he meets Mary who's telling her, you know, I know my brother he will resurrect and mm. he tells them, I am the resurrection. Yes. So at that point he was dealing with the truth. Yeah. Because Mary was grappling with the Martha, truth. Martha, yes. Martha, sorry. Mm. Was grappling with the truth. Mm. But when he sees them grappling with the pain, 
Jesus weeps. Mm. And so the hope that we have is that the God that we believe in, yeah. and this is again very unique to Christianity, mm. remember mm. this is still an apologetic series, yeah. is that the Christian faith legitimizes mm -hmm. our suffering. Yeah. It allows us to ask the questions of suffering meaningfully. Mm. Now, that is something that atheism cannot allow you to do. Mm. As an atheist, now, of course, as an atheist, you will suffer. Yeah. Nobody is saying that an atheist... No one is immune suffer. from suffering. But think about suffering in the worldview of mm. atheism. Mm. Not as an atheist, mm. but in the worldview of atheism. Mm. What are you saying? You're, you're saying that human beings are like just other animals, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. We are just atoms. It is, uh, it is uh, what is this guy's name? Who says that we are just atoms dancing to our DNA. Mm. Now, if we are just atoms that are dancing to our DNA, and this table is also an atom, what does it mean when I lose a loved one? Mm. Is it saying that a bunch of atoms has lost another bunch of atoms? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. In the atheistic framework, we do not have a framework that grounds suffering. That's we experience it, but we have to steal from God. That's true. To give us a framework mm. to help us now suffer meaningfully. Yeah. But in the Christian faith, you suffer. Why? Because you are a person of value. Mm. That is Christianity 101. That yeah. every human being is made in, in the, the image, image of God. Mm. And it is that image that is being corrupted by suffering and mm. that's why we feel the pain. Mm. So the hope then is that we can ask our questions legitimately to a God mm. who hears and who can mm. answer. Wow, mm. I like that, I like mm. that. Mm. Even as we conclude, because I would want, us, I would mm. want you to pray, oh. especially for those who um, you know, are in a situation right yeah. now. Mm. Um, some may not necessarily be grappling with the question, some may be, mm. but the reality is they're in pain. They're and, in pain. and I think it's C.S. Lewis who said, um, you know, um, there was a time when men would tell God, mm. there's a kind of suffering you do not understand. Yeah. Death, <laughs> because yeah. you are everlasting. Yeah. But now, now in Christ Jesus, mm. God understands both what? death yeah, and God understands yeah, losing a loved one. That's true. Which is some sort of the highest form yeah. of suffering. And God we has have to say the Christian mm. God. The Christian <laughs> God. Yes, exactly. The Christian. <laughs> the Christian God. Kindly pray, um, even at this time. Let's pray. Lord, again, this morning, we thank you. Mm. We are grateful, Lord, because your masses are new every morning. Mm. The Lord, when you give us an opportunity to see every day, when you give us an opportunity to relate with you every day, Lord, we are honored to know that, Lord, you have given us this light and mm. this truth, mm. even in vessels, jars of clay, as you will call them, mm. in weak vessels, Lord. And Lord, we want to pray for everyone who's listening to us, or even those around us, Lord, mm. who are going through suffering and pain. Mm. Lord, indeed, we appreciate the evil and the pain that comes with suffering. And we know that, Lord, you don't trivialize it. But, Lord, you come and enter into our suffering that we, and you remind us, we have a friend who sticks closer mm. than a brother. Mm. And so, Lord, we ask for your grace. We ask for your comfort for the one who is suffering and for your encouragement. But believing that, Lord, that that truth that you are still God and you are still good will be alive in us for the glory of your name. Mm. So we thank you for everything. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chege. Um, I know there are many of us that mm. have been encouraged mm. um, on account of today's conversation, and we can trust in the goodness of God. Amen. Wow. Well, I hope you have been encouraged. I don't know what your situation is currently, but please do engage with us. Is there a way in which today's conversation has perhaps bolstered your faith? Mm. Is there a way in which today's conversation is helping you? Perhaps not necessarily remove the pain mm. or the suffering you're going through, but give you strength to continue holding on mm -hmm. and to continue trusting in Jesus mm -hmm. and in the goodness of God. So that next time when in church we say God is good all the time mm -hmm. and all the time God is good, we can say that amidst tears, we can say that with heavy hearts, and yet we can say that with conviction mm -hmm. because he is good 
and he does good. May God help you to that end. But Sally is on the other end of studio. Hi, Sally. Good morning, Pasi. Good morning, Mr. Shege. How are you guys today? Very well. Very well. Thank you. Okay. Where that, uh, the topic for today is God really good. Do you know I've been in that space eh? oh, of wow. even questioning, mm. like, God, are you really good? Mm. At the time when I lost my mom, oh, you, being a believer and you trust God for healing, mm. and you go back to such questions. But mm. indeed, God remains to be good mm. and faithful mm. in all times and seasons, isn't it? Amen. Yeah, so me, I'm here today uh, with my people, as always, Financial Clinic today. And we'll be discussing about debt management. Mm. Yeah, and that even includes our country. So today we are going to talk about debt management. Yeah. You should ask that our executive <laughs> joins in this conversation. Absolutely. How do we learn, all of us, yeah. to manage our debt? Mm -hmm. All right. What yeah. a conversation that is. It's going to be and interesting. perhaps people should wonder is God still good when I fall into debt? Absolutely. Um, you know, but may God help you and give us. And part of the things He does is He gives us wisdom, mm -hmm. even on how to manage some of these things and this is part of the wisdom you'll receive so join Sally kindly um, for that well but we want to bring our conversation today to an end and before I do that I want to leave us with a passage of scripture and um, to encourage us but before I do that let me just um, take this time to remind us that we are able to continue bringing you conversations like this by virtue of donations from men and women like yourself and so I would encourage you if the Lord has given you ability and you're willing I'm um, kindly do consider donating to the work that we do here and so feel free to do that through the pay bill number 316 316 and for account kindly write your phone number and please do not worry about the amount because God is able to use whatever it is that we present in his hands as he used the little fish and the five loaves of bread from that little boy and fed the 5,000 and so feel free to do that and the Lord will bless you. And so I finish and encourage us with the words of Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 14 to verse 16. And this is what the Bible tells us. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then, with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And in that time of need that you're in, remember that Jesus Christ has experienced the full extent of human suffering. And on account of that, we can come to him as one who understands and will be able to receive mercy and to find grace to help us in that time of need. Would you do that today? Please do. And see you again tomorrow, even as we continue with this conversation. May the Lord help you.